Hi there, my name is Nils, and in this video I'm going to show you how to insulate a new construction space, like an unfinished basement. In this video we're going to be using the traditional uh, fiberglass insulation, and we've got a couple of different kinds that we're going to look at here. So first let's talk for just a moment about that. You can see here I've got R13 insulation here, and this comes in packages like this. You can get faced or unfaced, and I've got the unfaced um, insulation here because I've already, as you can see behind here, I've already got a vapor barrier, so I don't need to have the facing. The facing really serves as a way to keep the vapor trapped or away from the uh, sheetrock that you're going to be putting on after this. So I'm using R13 because that's the minimum requirement where I live. I live in Utah, and if you look at this map here, you can see that there's a lot of different values um, that are required based on where you live in the United States. If you live outside the United States, you're going to have different requirements, so be sure to check the code in your region. The R13 that I'm using here is uh, 15 inch wide, which means it's meant to fit in the bays of these uh, 2x4s that are 16 inches on center. So this stuff will friction fit right in. I don't have to tack it down or anything like that. It's just going to fit like we'll show in just a moment and it's going to do a great job at keeping this basement nice and cozy. The next part, um, the, other, the other insulation I have over here is R19, and this I'm going to use mostly as a sound barrier in between my basement floor, or excuse me, my basement ceiling and the floor upstairs. So the R19 is a lot thicker. Um, this is uh, also 15 inches wide, meant for 16 inches on center, but it's six and a quarter inches thick. So this one comes with eight pieces in a, in a package. This one comes with 11. And these are meant for approximately an eight foot ceiling. Most ceilings that are eight foot are actually a little bit less than eight foot, so you're gonna have a little extra to cut off, which we'll show in a moment. As far as tooling, you really don't need very much when you're doing insulation, fortunately. So I've got my uh, tape measure here, mostly just to measure your distances to make sure you're getting the right amount of length. And then also um, down here, I've got a couple of boxes for my outlets and then I've got right here access to the drain and so I want to make sure that I'm measuring my cutouts for those which will show. So you're going to need your tape measure for that kind of thing and then the most important tool you, you're going to use here is a utility knife. So this is what's going to do most of the work. It doesn't have to be a super sharp blade. We're going to use the concrete foundation here as our cutting surface. So the blade's going to get doled out anyway but it doesn't have to be super sharp to cut through this which is nice. As far as safety equipment, that's probably the most important thing. You want to make sure the, the most important thing you have is a respirator. This one's actually um, probably about as thin as you want to go. You can wear heavier ones, but you just want to make sure you're not breathing any of the fiberglass remnants into your lungs. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses, and then make sure all of your skin is covered up. Gloves, long sleeve shirt, pants, boots, and everything else to keep all your skin nice and covered up. One quick tip, if you've got gloves that have a Velcro or strap of some sort, you can tuck your long sleeve shirts into them so that when you're reaching up overhead, hopefully your, your sleeves will stay tucked in, pull it tight, and that way as you reach out, it's not gonna, not gonna come out. So with that, we've got our safety equipment in, in place, we've got our tools, let's go ahead and start insulating. So this first bay that we're gonna install the insulation in, we've got an outlet box right here. So a little cheat that I like to use to make things easier is to cut a little piece of insulation or tape or a stick or anything you want the same measurement right here that you're going to want to have underneath. And if you put all your electrical boxes in at the same height, then they should be consistent all the way across so you can reuse this one piece. So we've got that ready. So I'm going to cut open my bag. When you cut it open, make sure you've got the sides that you're cutting it on. Instead of cutting right across the face of one of them. And this will kind of just explode open. There we go. So there's our bag of insulation. I'm going to move this mostly out of the way. I'm going to grab one of these. Okay. Going to get your on your first piece. You're going to get your measurement of the height of your wall. So here I've got about 88 and a half inches for the stud bay. And we're going to measure that on our uh, piece of insulation here. And typically, that's not going to change much for the length of the wall, so you're not going to have to worry about measuring it over and over. So 88 and a half is right here for me. So I'll just cut across using the basement floor as my cutting board. Oops. Don't need that. And now, I know that this piece is going to be on, on this side over here. So I'm going to take that 
as my measurement and then just cut out a small box about the size of that electrical box like so and then I'm going to take what, that piece that I've cut out and place it behind the electrical box. I'm done with my template piece there and now when I go to install this I'm going to start at the top and the idea is to have the front of your insulation at the same depth as the face of your 2x4s. You shouldn't have to shove it in, it shouldn't be creased in the middle. If these are uh, fit right, then they should just sit nicely right in there just like this. We're not trying to squish it or force it in there. And then you can see my box fits right, or my insulation fits right around the box. And then you should have a nice fitting. Let's give it a little tug to make sure it's all the way in place. And at the bottom here, it should go right up against your baseboard. So that's a basic installation. We're going to follow that same procedure, but I'm going to come back and show you in just a second what to do with wires or other things that are in your way. Now when you come across a wire, a pipe, or anything that's sticking out into the stud, like this one's about, it's maybe set back a little bit more than halfway, but it's enough that we're not going to want to squish the fiberglass if you can avoid it. So in this case, what we want to do is cut around the obstruction. So I'm going to take my blade, bend it up, and I'm going to put the bend right about where the wire is like that. And then being careful not to touch the, the cord, the electrical wire, I'm just going to score about halfway through. You can see it kind of opens up. And then I'm going to take that and just push that behind the wire like, like so. And what that does is just allows the fiberglass to wrap right around the wire and it doesn't compress it at all. And then as I put the rest in, it should fit nice and snug. So now I haven't squished it out. I don't have a part that's sticking out where the wire is. If you've got that, then that's going to be less efficient. So you want to make sure you're cutting around any obstructions in the wall. All right, once you have your walls done, we're ready to go ahead and take care of the ceilings. Now the ceilings are actually quite a bit more complicated than doing the walls, unfortunately, because you've got a lot more to put up with. You've got your HVAC runs, um, a lot of times you've got wires crossing all over the place. You might have gas lines, you might have water lines, you might have soffits. So there's lots of different obstructions that you're going to have to keep in mind as you're running these wires, or excuse me, as you're insulating around all of these uh, different systems that we've put in place. So I'm going to start with a fairly complicated one, this one right here, where I've got a line to my register out here. I've got um, audio video cables, and I've got electrical cables and some studs. So I've got plenty to compete with, so I just kind of want to show you how I would break that down to make that happen. So looking up here, this space right here is pretty empty. So I think rather than try to keep that as part of the same piece of insulation, I'm just going to cut a separate one to fit right in here. There's a little space right here next to my register. I'm going to fit my insulation right around that. I'll kind of measure it and get a good fit right there. Then for the rest of it, I'm going to do the whole rest of it as one piece. And I'll show you the technique I used to do that. So now we're going to be working with our R19 ceiling insulation. So the method I like to use is I'm going to place my, my bat right underneath where it's going to be installed. There's a couple of options. If you're, if you're thinking it's really, you need to be pretty precise, you can measure it all. But I find it a lot quicker is just to look at um, where your ceiling placement is and then transfer that down onto the insulation that you're working on. So I'm going to start by cutting my piece right here which will leave me with the end piece that I need. So I'm going to cut that off. Now remember, my paper is down. My craft batting paper is uh, down. So I'm going to make my cut here. And if you press hard, you can cut through the paper like that. If you press a little softer, you'll cut to the paper without cutting the paper. And in most of what we're going to do, that's going to be uh, very helpful. So I've got, I'll kind of get this out of the way and then make sure this is lined up with my 2x4 right there. And so with that there, now I'm just going to go through and basically transfer all my cuts. The first thing I have to de deal with is my uh, line here for HVAC. And so I don't want to just cut a line. I want to actually remove quite a bit so that the insulation wraps up around the line. So this is pretty well centered all the way down, which makes things pretty easy. So I'll just kind of start in the middle here. And here I'm just going to cut. And I'm not pushing all the way down. I'm trying not to cut through the paper. Now all I need to do is remove a portion of this. I don't need to remove all of it because I want some insulation still 
because the line doesn't come all the way down to where the sheetrock is going to be. And I figure that's about as deep as we're going to want to go for that. And I'll do the same thing all the way down through the rest of it. I'm going to make sure things are lined up again. It looks like I shifted a little bit. And get right under it, look at my line, and that transfers to right about here. And this one's running in a diagonal to about here. So I'm just going to cut that. And again, not cutting through the paper, just cutting the insulation open like that so that I can stick the wires right in there. And then that's it. Um, I'll have to do some more as I get a little bit further down, but that's it for this one. Now I'm ready to go ahead and put it in place. All right, now that I'm up here, I've got my channel and I'm going to um, go ahead and place that. Now these, the paper batting here, when I was talking about, we have a lip all the way down. And I like to do these inset as opposed to on the face, which just means that I'm gonna place um, the paper batting up against the lip of the joist here or the I-beams. So I'm going to position my insulation around the HVAC line. You can see it's fitting in there pretty nicely. I'm going to push that back just a little bit. I can't go too much because I have my measurements. And then I just kind of hold it in place and work my way down. So we'll keep that one up there. And then if it's a little loose, have your staple gun handy. I can get it free and then we can drive a couple staples in just to hold everything in place we want it to be basically flush with the bottom of the of the i-beam now i've got my wire up here and so i'm making sure that the split is going to go right around that wire okay and then i'm just going to work my way on down the line working around the obstructions that i had making sure everything fits in place i've got my wires there wires here so now i'm just going to go through and run my staples. So we're going to repeat that process and go all the way through all of the ceiling. We're going to work around the obstructions and the main goal here is not to compress your insulation so it doesn't lose that efficiency that it has by being fully expanded. All right so with a little work we were able to finish putting in all of the insulation and the ceiling and in this room in particular all of the walls are done and everything else and it's looking really good. So. Uh, the acoustics in here are already quite a bit different and you can hear that the sound isn't bouncing off um, any hard surfaces or anything. Everything's nice and, and insulated and we've insulated soffits in the whole nine yards. So everything in here is looking good. We're going to go ahead and uh, call it a day and thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave comments. I'm usually pretty responsive and trying to get back to you if I can help in any way. And if you haven't already, take a look at some of the other videos on the channel. I've got lots of videos on basement finishing tips. Uh, things around the house like electrical tips and uh, just making your house a little bit better. That's what this channel is all about. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time.